you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I am righteous. I am right in His sight. How did that come? That came through His grace. That, I am right in His sight. That's my posture. That's my standing. How did it come? Did it, was it something that I earned? Was it something that I worked for? Was it something that I deserved? No, it's something that I've received by faith. I am righteous through His grace. Text to give with Secure Give is a fast, easy way to give from anywhere, anytime. It's just two quick steps. First, text the keyword CDMBC followed by the amount you like to give to 74483. Second, when asked to confirm, just text Y and your transaction is complete. That's all there is to it. Text to give, the fastest, easiest way to give on the go. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. If you are going through a trial, it is to bring to your attention your self-dependence. That somehow in your life, you are depending on you rather than depending on God, and God is committed to make sure there are some, some trials that will be used to burn away self-dependence to finally bring you to a place where you can totally depend on Him. That's the purpose for trials. So don't complain and don't get all soft and weird, you know, God will help me. No, 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 no. He helping you through that trial you're going through. So don't mumble, don't, don't get upset and mumble through the trial. Just listen, God trying to show me something. I must be declaring my, my, my dependence on myself somewhere. Why did Peter have to go through what Peter had to go through? Because Jesus was trying to show him, Peter, you know, you, you, you have too much dependence on yourself. No, I don't, Lord, but I ain't going to let you die, and I'm not going to do this. And he said, you know what, dude, it, 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 it ain't going to be from long from right now. You're going to deny it. you even know me. Peter went from revelation knowledge of who Jesus was to denying who Jesus was. Trial came, burned it off. Now he depends completely on God. And I know that's a big thing now because you give yourself too much credit. You got an education, you got a degree, you got some money, you know some impotent people. In fact, now you think you're impotent. And the, uh, the worst thing you can do is convince yourself that you're important. That's the worst thing you can do is to go around, look in the mirror, and, talk, and look at yourself like you're important. You're not. And it's going to take a trial to help you get rid of that. Because God can sure let you know you ain't important. You a little high strong. And he know how to bring you down. Somebody said, well, where's the grace at? There's a grace right there. He loves you so much, he's saving you from yourself by delivering you from yourself. He's trying to tell you you're too important, but you ain't listening to him. But you are listening to a hard time. You'll listen to when that money ain't coming through. You'll listen to when you lost that job. You'll listen to your wife getting tired of you talking that way, and she says, Freddie, I want a divorce right now. And all of a sudden, you're like, Lord, what's going on? He said, go handle it with your important self. <laughs> God knows how to deal with everybody in this room. And you can play all the church games you want to play. But God knows you. God knows you like nobody knows you. God knows you better than you know yourself. You might as well get honest with your Quit lying to, you, to yourself. Lord, I ain't prideful. He's like, yes, you are. No, I'm not. Who are you talking to? You talking, who are you talking to? <laughs> oh, he in there. He know you. He been knowing you. He know you in the booth, the back, the corner, the dark. He know you. And if he tell you you're prideful, 
Don't deny it. Just say, Lord, help me. Show it to me. Show me what I need to do. Show me how to get out of this situation. And it was a situation where I got so stressed out that my face felt like it was turning and I was going to get that bell palsy because I just had all this stuff going on. And I'm, I'm going to the Lord for the help. That's the thing to do. Go to the Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, help me. He said, you weren't supposed to be there in the first place. By there, he means you set boundaries. Why are you over the fence? I told you not to deal with that. Why you deal with it? Oh, this is easy. Get back over the fence. Get on your side of the fence. Get on your side of the fence. Do like Taffy say. She, he always on Taffy's side. Always on Taffy's side. <laughs> I ain't I asked one time. I'm like, why are you always on Taffy's side? Because she's always on my side. I said, well, where, I, where am I? He said, in the center of the circle, yours. <laughs> God will help you. And the Bible says, you know, you don't need this trials to come. He says it comes if it need be. And I'm, I'm constantly going for God like, listen, Lord, I don't want to have, I don't want nothing that, that need be. <laughs> so I want to volunteer <laughs> to work with you. What I, what I need to do, get back on the side or let me hop back over here. What else I need to do, Lord? Because the Lord be bringing them need be things coming up. You're like, oh, no. Everybody understand that? <laughs> Say out loud, I'm right with God. I'm pure and holy. And I'm forgiven of sin right now. Right where I sit. I am. All right, so now let's deal with this first part. By grace of standing before God. So grace is what provides that right posture. You know, you can't have a wrong posture. When the, when the Bible removed the anointing, and Isaiah describes it as removing the yoke around the neck and taking the burdens off the shoulders. Now, I imagine the posture of a person who has the yoke around their neck and the burden on their shoulders. They're walking like this. But he said, I, I'll come to remove the burden, they can stand up straight, and I'll destroy the yoke. It, it completely destroys that old posture. So God knew the first thing I got to do in order for them to, to receive from grace is I got to get them in the right posture. So the first work of grace provides a standing before God. So this is fully accomplished the moment a sinner believes on Jesus as the one who satisfies on his behalf the demands of God's justice. You believe the guy who has satisfied God's justice. Now, things that constitute believers standing are going to be accomplished by His grace. The things that, are, that constitutes a believer, believer's standard is going to be accomplished by His grace. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. I'm going to show you uh, three or four scriptures on, on this to see it. To me, I thought, well, this sounds elementary. You got to be careful about how it sounds. It's one of those things that sound easy, but may be the biggest challenge to this grace walk. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 in, in the uh, NLT. All right, now check this out. He says, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son, watch this, and forgave our sins. So listen, by grace, I am free and forgiven of sins. He purchased that with his blood. I am already free. Say, I'm free. I'm free. I am already forgiven of sins. Say, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. Okay, so that standard now, that standing was accomplished by His grace. By grace I am free. By grace I have been forgiving. That standing I have because of His grace. Here's the second part. Romans 3.24 in the NLT. Romans 3.24. And I'm, I'm being repetitive on this. We've heard, we heard so many other things repetitive that we say them, and they're wrong, but we've heard them so much. It's going to require me saying stuff over and over again so you can hear it so much so you can start getting rid of all of that wrong stuff. He says, yet God in His grace, God in His grace freely makes us what? Right in His sight. He did this through Jesus Christ when He freed us 
from the penalty for our sins. So notice, I am righteous. I am right in His sight. How did that come? That came through His grace. That, I am right in His sight. That's my posture. That's my standing. How did it come? Did it, was it something that I earned? Was it something that I worked for? Was it something that I deserved? No, it's something that I've received by faith. I am righteous through His grace. Here's the third one, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22 in the NLT. Now watch this. He gives a whole list here. He says, this includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies, separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Verse 22, yet now he has reconciled you. He has reconciled you. Say, I'm reconciled. See, my, my posture is I'm reconciled. I have been restored back to friendship with God. The, enemy, the en enmity has ended between God and man because of his sins. I am standing restored back to God. That means God is not mad at me. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body, as a result, he has brought you into his own presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. So, what has been accomplished through his great? I'm reconciled. God's not mad at me. God's not going to try to get me. You know, people, God going to get you. God don't like ugly. He going to get you. And, and, and ain't you tired of him? Aren't you tired of Ain't, ain't you tired? Ain't you, God going to get you. He going to get you. God don't like ugly. Honey, if God was going to get me as many times, you going to tell me he was going to get me out of being got right now. <laughs> but he's not. Why? Because you've been reconciled back to God. You, watch this. You have also been by his grace put in his presence. Do you realize that God's presence is with you all the time now that you're saved? His presence is with you. It is not because you feel something, whether you feel something or not. That's why Taffy said we got to do things by faith because it's not based on you feeling something. Somebody says, ooh, I had chill bumps when I was praying this morning. Ooh, I know, I know God heard my prayer this morning because I had chill bumps. It, it, listen, you got to get to the point where you don't have no chill bumps and you still know God was with you when you was praying. See, that's that religion stuff, that it can't be real unless I feel something. That's, the, that's, what's been de that's what deceived us. I have the presence of God. I have an in me. And he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So when he's not there, he's broken that promise. He says, I'm not going to leave you or forsake you. But your religious, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Yo, that dog can't tell you nothing because you think you know more than Jesus Christ, him crucified, dead, and buried, raised from the dead, seated on the right hand of God, follow him out. Can't nobody tell you that. <laughs> nah, I don't receive that because my class tells me in my cemetery school that I've got to, I've got to perform these five acts in order to deserve what God wants to do to me. It's a lie. Can't you read? He just said it. Can't you read? We all reading together. That's all we're doing. We read, we read, we read. I don't know what else to tell you. If you don't, listen, to hear a born-again Christian say, I got to go and pray until the presence of God come on me. Honey, you should have walked in with him this morning. Okay, let me just go and freak you out. Even if you go to the bar and just got stupid for a minute, and come back, and you buy this idea because you hadn't accepted your standing? Well, God can't be with me. Well, why can't you come on? I got drunk last night. Oh, he was right there with you. You remember when that glass slid over there? Huh? Let's look at it. some of y'all stop. <sighs> you didn't leave the Holy Ghost when you decided to go to the bar. When you went to the bar, he went with you. You stop by a motel, whatever, and what we call it last week, Miss Kitty? You, you met Miss Kitty there in room 666? You didn't, go up there, you didn't go up in that room by yourself. He went with you. 
I, I see some of you little small folks around. That's what I'm saying. Can't hardly tell you nothing. You're small. You're already got ahead of me. Mm, mm, mm. And you ought to see the, the, the comments on the line right now. And that ain't what my Bible says. You don't know how to read your Bible. That's why I'm talking to you about this stuff right now, because if you know how to read your Bible, I wouldn't have to talk to you about this stuff right now. But anyway, so. <laughs> all right, you want scripture? I'll give you a little simple one. Goodness and mercy <laughs> shall follow you all the days of your life. When you went to the bar, goodness and mercy went with you. When you went to the hotel, goodness and mercy went with you. And when you came back to church, goodness and mercy went with you. The only difference was is you just changed your mind about that stuff and goodness and mercy say, we've been here the whole time. We've been, we've been working on you the whole time. We saw you when you got drunk. We saw you when you was Miss Kitty. But we've been working on you, praise God. And now you don't want none of that brass monkey because Pastor tried to tell you to put you in the next day. And now you don't want Miss Kitty because Marsha Dillon showed up and caught y'all. See, you got to understand that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. <laughs> and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's his presence. That's his presence. I, I need to look at this like, what is going on with you, boy? <laughs> and the Satan has made that so difficult for people to receive. Receive what? Their posture. Receive what? Their stance. You keep fighting him on who you are. Bruh, you are because Jesus said you are. Do you know one of the definitions for righteousness is declared righteous. You know what God told me? He says, you know one, he says, you know one reason why you're righteous? Because I said it. Oh. That's the big fight, especially amongst church people who've been in church all their life. Struggling to receive your God-given posture. Now, you watch the number of times this week where you're going to be tested where your position, your stance, and your posture is concerned. And you got to ask God, help me to see it. Help me to notice it. Because I'm going to start actively fighting against anything that tries to talk me out of who I am and who I've been made to be through this grace of God. And I, I, th I thought, even studying this, I'm th I thought, well, you know, I mean, God, that's, this is a pretty easy message by God's study. He says this is not about how they intellectually perceive what you're saying. He said, I'm telling you, this is a deeply rooted issue that I face all the time trying to allow my limitless love to bloom in their lives, and they keep building up boundaries, the wrong kind, of rejecting grace given posture. If you should fall, not saying that you will, because here's, not, here's one thing I do know, when you fall, you will arise and God's going to take you to the next level. You're not going to be being defeated by that thing all the time. That's not how that's going to happen. You're going to wake up one day, and there are several things that used to be a part of your behavior that don't exist anymore. And you're going to have to back up and be like, whoa, whoa, when did, when did that happen? You were so busy walking in your grace-given posture that it started transforming your behavior. See, what we've done as Christians is when you do something bad, you say, I'm a bad person. You immediately relate your bad behavior to your identity, and then you back up on grace-given identity, and now you say that identity is now based on performance. And now you start preaching the gospel of performance, and it starts changing your grace-given identity. We can't let that happen anymore. I am the righteousness of God now. I'm pure and I'm holy now. I'm delivered from sin now. And watch this. And I am the tabernacle of God's presence. 
It doesn't, it doesn't abide in that box, the ark. Don't, it, don't, it doesn't abide there no more. It, his presence lives in you. That's why you can hear him with your inner ear. That's why instructions can come from inside. You got an advantage over the world. They depend on outside information. We live by inside information. Now listen, you got to start walking this before you believe it. If all you're going to do is play mental, in intellectual acrobats with what I'm teaching you, bro, go on, get out of here. It, it ain't gonna, it, it's not designed. Grace is not even designed. Grace is a provision for the spiritual part of your life that failed in the Garden of Eden. Grace is God's provision to take care of that new creation on the inside so that it may supply from the inside out. And just like food and water and sunlight was provision for the grass and the animals and even human beings, grace is provision for the, that spiritual realm that's working on the inside of a man. And you keep trying to do something with it. <sighs> These, oh yeah, let me finish. So we've got, we are reconciled. We've got the presence of God. We're holy. We're blameless. And I like what he says. And we stand before him with no single fault. Oh my goodness. Think of that. Think of you reminding yourself while the enemy is trying to use something you did or you missed a mark, and he's trying to fault you, and God says, I'm not blaming you because when I see you, I see you with no faults. So, so when Jesus said this, he said, I ain't concerned about the devil. Why? because he can't find nothing in me. The reason why stuff keep happening in the lives of church folks is you keep giving him something to find in you because you won't receive, you won't receive who you are and who grace gave you. He find nothing in me. You, you remember when Paul, Paul had to mitigate the audacity to, to make what I thought was an egregious remark when he said, I have rolled no man. I have defrauded no man. And what was the other one? Did nothing wrong to no man. <laughs> you know what? How can he say that? When there are so many scriptures about him going and, 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 and reaping havoc and causing people to be killed and stoning folks, he was the one behind Stephen stoning. He had the nerve to sit up there and say, I've wronged no man. Yeah, you have. I defrauded no man. See right here, here I go. Here's a record of you. And I'm thinking, oh, what was he doing? Paul, from that point on, would never measure himself by what he did in the past or whatever happened to him. Paul only measured himself by the grace of God and the posture that was given to him by God's grace. Have you ever wondered what God made available to you through grace? Creflo Dollar reveals the provisions contained within this unique gift from God in his series, Grace, God's Provision for the Believer. It is grace upon grace that removes fear and it gives assurance. It brings stability and direction to your earthly life. God says, I'm going to cause my goodness to get on you when you don't think it ought to be on you and it's going to change your mind about the dumb behavior that you did and I'm going to have you walk in grace upon grace upon grace until you can't hardly take it no more because his mercy kept showing up when you know you didn't deserve it and grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. For a love gift of 25 U.S. dollars or more, plus shipping and handling, this four-message series can be yours today. 
Simply call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit creflodollarministries.org and click on eStore. Take the first steps on the path of righteousness today. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. You've got to figure out a way to maintain your meditation on Him. you got to think on Him. I want my thinking to be on God. I want my thinking to be on His Word. I want my thinking to be on life. I want my thinking to be on His promises. Keep your mind stayed upon Him and walk in His presence. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. And how many of you know we've got to shine the light out so that we can see God and we can experience His plan for our life and we can see what He wants to do and turn situations around. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. We want to be sure we are living according to what God has taught us about giving. And we understand that giving and receiving is a spiritual law. It's a reflex of God's love. And I'm so glad that Tap and I begin to understand how to walk in this principle. But we give not out of necessity. We give out of a cheerful heart. We give because we're grateful and we're thankful to what God has done. You know, I, I want you to pray about uh, becoming a giver into Creflo Dollar Ministries today. And if this ministry has blessed you in any way, consider sowing a seed of any amount and we will greatly appreciate it. Thank you in advance for your support and God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit creflodollarministries.org today. God bless you. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.